I have seen so many times doctors ordering coagulation screen in children without thinking why are they ordering it and what information they want to derive from it. Now this situation is more common when they are dealing with febrile patients and they are taking bloods to do some investigations. Now before we begin talking about the ins and outs of coagulation screen, remember that you should only order a coagulation screen if you are suspecting conditions where there is an issue or there can be an issue with the bleeding and clotting. Now this includes children with petechiae, uh, children with unexplained bruising or those who have got suspected bleeding or clotting disorders or those children who are soon to undergo surgery or those who are on any anticoagulant medications. Last but not the least, uh, liver damage also warrants a coagulation screen for example as in acute paracetamol poisoning or toxicity okay so what is a coagulation screen a coagulation screen is a screening test now coagulation screen basically looks at a few screening tests for which you use the sky blue color top bottles and these bottles they include citrate because you don't want a clotted blood and citrate in these bottles it takes the calcium out of blood and hence prevents it from clotting now the first one among the quag screen is pt or prothrombin time now, prothrombin time is usually between 11 to 13.5 seconds now the acronym pt also stands for play tennis and you know tennis is played outside of your home or extrinsic so Extrinsic means that PT or prothrombin time measures the extrinsic pathway and you know the extrinsic pathway starts with factor 7 and the rest is the combined pathway. Now since isolated factor 7 deficiency is very, is very rare, <coughs> excuse me, most of the time PT is raised because of generalized deficiency of clotting factors and they usually stem from one of the following uh, diseases. For example, somebody has got liver disease. Number two, somebody who has got vitamin K deficiency. Number three, somebody who is on anticoagulant medications like buffering. Number four, somebody who has got disseminated intravascular coagulation. Sometimes prothrombin 10 can be low as well and it usually occurs due to estrogen containing medications, for example contraceptive use. It can also occur in cancer, in severe infections and thyroid disorders. Associated with prothrombin time is your INR, which stands for International Normalized Ratio, and it should be somewhere between 0.8 to 1.1. It is very simple. It is calculated as a patient prothrombin time divided by a control prothrombin time. So usually it is used as a setting uh, in on 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 anticoagulation use. And uh, for example, if a hematologist uh, wants to prescribe heparin or is prescribing heparin or let's say low molecular, uh, low molecular rate heparin and he wants to keep an INR ratio between 2 and 2.5. The next test used in coagulation screen is APTT. Now APTT stands for activated partial thromboplastin time. And the TT in this APTT also stands for table tennis. And you know table tennis is played inside or is intrinsic so aptt looks at the intrinsic pathway and you know the intrinsic pathway especially looks at the factors uh, seven uh, sorry factors eight nine and eleven the normal aptt is between 25 to 35 seconds it can be prolonged in deficiency of factors eight nine and eleven which are also called hemophilia a b and c respectively it can sometimes also be prolonged in von Willenbrand disease because von Willenbrand factor is closely associated with factor 8. It can sometimes be low as well and it usually is low in cancer patients, in severe infections, in diabetes, sometimes in liver and thyroid uh, disorders or in those patients who have got some thromboembolic phenomena. There used to be bleeding time and clotting time which were once upon a time used as a part of the quag screen but they are not used anymore. Remember, this was just a condensed overview of coagulation screen. Next time, do think before you order a coagulation screen. And if you have learned a bit or two from this lecture, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe and share with your friends. Take care and bye-bye.